the sudden and drive. Thank exactly. you very much, Carl. <laughs> Drawing a blank, it's been a long day. Carl Parton. And we'll go ahead and get started this evening. Call the meeting to order. Any addition or changes to the agenda? Then? No. Okay. Any public comment? Hearing none, we'll move forward. We have a permit request from Wayne Lamberton. I'll, I'll speak to that real quickly to kick it off. Uh, Mr. Lee is here to talk about that and answer any questions. Excellent. Um, you have a document that, that they provided um, in your in your package. It's just a, again, it's just a briefing, and that's what uh, Mr. Lee is here, is just to fill you in on what they're doing and why they're doing it. Excellent. And if you have any questions. Wonderful. Thank you very much. If you want to take the floor and... Uh, <laughs> Give us your information. Appreciate it. And thank you for providing the outline, too. All right. So you'll see on the outline, I don't know if you're able to review it. But um, so essentially, we're taking Maplewood Limited, which owned the Comfort Inn, Applebee's, and the store. When the store moved up to the bigger store, we were going to make it convenience, and we couldn't at that time. So now that we've sold the hotel, Applebee's, we're now, we want to put every store under the same roof more or less, you know, just save payroll things, filing and all the different stuff. So in doing that, we have, to, we have to apply for new licensing through the state, and then one of them being the one license, so, which has to be approved by you guys. So, so you'll be going from Maplewood Limited of Montpelier to Maplewood Convenience Stores Incorporated? Yeah, mm -hmm. which exists now. So it has our South Berry store, and then Waterbury, Royal Turner, but one all are all under that. Excellent. So then, for oh, one, then move on there. Mm -hmm. Maplewood Limited will no longer exist. So. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you yes. coming in to discuss it. Well, that, too. yeah. It's, could be a little confusing because of all the maple woods that were around when, when it was showing for a bit and that too. So if you went back to research it, it's much simpler now. Very good. Any questions for Randy? So the liquor license, is that going to be changed with the renewal? Or is this? We have to get it before. Okay. And so that's why we applied for it now. So then we'll have to renew it again. Yeah, they get fees the Sorry. At that time. <laughs> Every time, but that's okay. It'll it works better than to be all people in units sort of thing. Pretty standard is the one that we will send to you or we'll send to you in a month. Okay. Very good. We'll make it work. Thank you so much. Right. We Thank appreciate you. you. Next on the agenda tonight is the BAS presentation and update. Is it Dave Rulo with us? Oh, uh, Josh is replacing oh, Mr. Rulo. Very good. Hi, Josh. Hi. Josh Walker is with us. If you'd like to come forward, Josh. I think that Vince has the stuff. I'm, I'm just here for any questions, maybe. Wonderful. Yep. Excellent. i got to find where I put it. I just printed out his email. I wasn't certain because I hadn't seen it in the packet, but that's great. It's mainly the stuff that we went over last year, and it's just we would have to come every year to just get approval again for, it's mainly we're doing the same thing as we did last year. Excellent. Thank you. So the, again, it's it's pretty much business as usual. We can't sign the uh, quarter management agreement tonight. We're hoping to get that done. Um, but there were some tweaks made by the Conservation Commission, um, and Bass needed a chance to respond, which they have. Um, so we, just, we need to update that. I'll get that done this week and with the board's permission. Again, I signed it last year as well. I'll just, just ask for uh, the permission to sign that once that's completed. We've got the, uh, the certificate of insurance from VAST has been mailed, um, so that'll be on file as well. Uh, the only other request that they have, and this is really what I think Josh is probably here to talk about, was a discussion about uh, crossing from the open lot above 802 Honda. They're actually moving the trail for some safety reasons and trying to uh, either get an approved crossing over to Applebee's or uh, do something with some sightage. And I'll let Josh talk about the details for that. And they're looking for the board's, board's uh, agreement uh, on, the, on that. Excellent. Thank you, Josh. What that is, is just uh, right now we cross and go into uh, Maplewood, into the Traveler Center. 
and from there people are kind of crossing over and then there's that little retention pond between so it's kind of confusing for which way they should go and it would also maybe slow up some of the traffic if people are just going over to Applebee's they can just go over and, uh, and uh, park in that little vacant lot I, I don't know if anybody had approached uh, Randy and Wayne which own that little vacant lot What's the vacant lot? The one, the little grass strip between uh, 802 Honda and the driveway into Shaw's. There's like, like a little gra open lot right there. Let, I'd assume that they have talked talk to them because uh, they have opened up their land every place else. You know, we, we got uh, permission from Wayne and Randy to go over through the solar panels now and out through Wayne's property so we don't have to go through the industrial park anymore, which was a lot of crossing and road ride and so that's made that much safer corridor right there Excellent. and we've gotten permission from the parent farm to go around the back side of the airport instead of going around whatever that road is that comes in you know by the fitness center what's that road industrial, industrial lab so we're, we're getting rid of the trail that goes through there and so you, there isn't going to be any trial through there anymore. And, and, and mainly the, the thing was, if you're, if you're just going to Applebee's and not going to the store, there's no reason to go over to the store. So we're, it's kind of still in negotiation a little bit, but we were checking to see if the town had any issues with us crossing down just a little farther. If people just want to go through the grass strip, cross the road there, which may be too close to the intersection of the interstate. So that's why we just kind of have it in question right now. So, so you, oh, sorry. I was just going to ask Tim if he foresaw any issues as it's been explained this evening in terms of where they're suggesting to cross. How's your intentions on getting to the grass law? They've already, um, Shaw's owns the land on the other so side. Cut through yep, cut through them bush, through that brush, just like we do to get to. Because um, my only my only concern was, is, and it's been concern in previous years, not just even me. We have to, they're riding down the road on the right hand side. If you're going to the interstate, there's three or four catch basins down through there that they were plugging, right. and we were getting spring. Yeah, problem in the springs, but. They don't normally go that way, so I was just curious. If it's going to be over that way, then... I think they're trying to get rid of that issue, too. Yeah. That so. would be my only concern about right in the side of the road right there. Yeah, and, it's a, and I think they have it. They're cutting through up closer to the little road that goes behind them all. Yeah. You know, the little access, the yeah. little trucks behind them all. And, then, and Joe, you had questions? Yeah, so where are they actually going to be crossing Adrian Pike? So, um, it would mainly be right where that, you know, it must be like a hundred feet of grass strip right there between the two. So it would be... Yeah, yeah. So between the Shaw's parking lot and the lights. The correct. traffic lights. Yes. And before, and before the uh, Town & Country Honda. Right. Or 802 Honda now. That can be just crazy with a vehicle coming out of Shaw's at times. Just kind of putting it out there a, a yeah. little bit, you know. Yeah, so what, what uh, Dave proposed in his email is that they would like to see, you know, a, a legal crossing put in there. That would be their preference, but he said, again, he'll go, you know, Bast is willing to obviously go with what the, what the board feels is best as well. Because um, he thinks the riders, if it is busy, the riders will park and walk across using the crossing versus driving their sleds across as well, possibly. Yeah, they park just in that little grass strip yep. and just walk across the road. If it's not a legal crossing, then what he said is he'll work directly with the police and Washington City Sheriff's Department um, on how to educate on not crossing and put up some si other signage as well to not cross with sleds there. So, I mean, th those are the kind of the proposals that he laid out in here. And like Josh said, they're still working on it. Um, but obviously the season is, is upon us for that, so they want to... And if there was a red flag, we'll just put it aside, you know, but something to think about maybe. Thanks for addressing it with us. Sure. sure. Any, any other questions before we request a motion? 
I, I guess I would just uh, maybe request that um, if Vince uh, does his stuff, it just give him the authority to sign our permission form. Tonight, maybe you can just say, if you guys agree, you have signed for what we agreed to last year. I haven't seen the management plan, so I'm not, I'm not ready to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to make the motion to accept it. Vince, do you have a copy of the management plan? That not with the, uh, the changes. I know uh, uh, Dave uh, sent a note. He dropped it off in the, in the box today, and I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. So, um, Would it hinder but, anything if we put it on the next agenda? Nope, to be discussed a as a whole? No, it won't, won't hurt anything. And I'll, I'll send it out in advance. It'll be done probably probably tomorrow, no later than Wednesday. Uh, the changes will be made and, and ready to go. It's, there's again, there's there's not a lot of difference between. It's just some verbiage to make things a little more specific um, from both sides uh, to clean it up a little bit from last year. It's almost identical to last year, and it added the Northfield Club's signature to it as well, since they're the ones that are responsible in doing the uh, trail maintenance. Yep. So it added them. Would it benefit in terms of sending it out to everyone on the board and we review it and get the permission forward to you for That's signing? Fine. Yep. As I opposed last to putting year. on next Which agenda? That would okay. certainly be quicker. Okay, very good. We can do that. Excellent. Yeah, I think the only real thing is just the change that we're doing with the conservation board. We're not That's really it. changing anything with the agreement we have with the town. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's just the agreement we have with the conservation board on the section of their land that we go through on Irish Hill. Yeah. Excellent. So based on that, would the board feel comfortable in making a motion pending the review to allow Vince to sign if we're all in agreement after we review it by email? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move uh, to accept the proposed management plan upon select board reviewing and uh, by giving Vince email permission. And second. And we're not necessarily voting via email. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. And next on the agenda is the fire department radio purchase approval. Okay. Again, you have the uh, quote in your package. And that was based on the, the, we had the discussion at the last board meeting. And I believe it was to use uh, the reason it's on here for a decision or approval to use the ARPA funds to uh, purchase this. Were there any changes to the poll? Nope. So I had a couple of quick questions just about the budgetary process. So the fire department has a budget that's voted on in March. Um, uh, so there was probably radio communications within that budget. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so this would be over, a, and I'm assuming there's no money left in the fire department's communications line item of the budget. There might be a thousand dollars left. Okay. Um, so this would be over and above the approved budget that uh, the voters approved in, in last March. But I was pretty convinced by the uh, by the presentation of, of why this is needed. Um, we are coming right up on, um, but well, we're working on the budget now. Um, I guess my question is, uh, we, we've done a lot of um, extra budget uh, uh, expenditures this year. Um, would it would it affect the fire department adversely? Or I, I know there's inconvenience right now. Uh, if we waited until after March, and this was put into the fire department's next year's budget, and then spent that approved by voters. Wow, I should be putting my other hat on. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I know. <laughs> I could, well, I, uh, Matt, Matt's here. Well, we could, we could, we could, we could, you're talking about the line item for communications. We have currently a $6,000 line item. That's for a, you know, a few pagers and a few hand you know, portals. Um, this right here is for 
just under thirty thousand dollars, you're going to be looking. That's a what an eight percent increase to your budget, just alone. So, with, without the cost of living going into um, next year's, which would be fiscal year 2025, um, before any of the increases for um, anything else, you're looking at 8%. So you're probably going to be looking at probably almost a, a 16 to 18% increase if we were to put this into the budget. For communications? No. For the department. I look at it as an overall. And Vince, does and this qualify for ARPA funds? Yeah. It does. Yeah. And so currently you, you have both PD and the road crew, the highway crew, um, changing radio frequencies. And you have emergency management um, using the Berlin Fire Department as their EOC emergency operations center. Um, and by changing the frequencies and not allowing the emergency management to allow their emergency operations center to change as well, you have now just cut communications throughout the town. So in the past, it's been done. It's just less convenient. I mean, we, we haven't had this system for the past. Like, no, but we were able to communicate. I can still communicate with Tim. Right. right. But as soon as they get new radios, the communication's going to stop. Right. That's scheduled to happen right after the first of the year right now for both the highway and the police to start that conversion. Okay. Any other questions regarding this? Do we want to entertain a motion to move forward with the quote? Should I accuse myself? No. No, no <laughs> not necessary. And Matt, did you want to also include information? I'm not sure if you can hear Yes. Hi, Matt. Hey, sorry. I, I was. I'm. I'm really just listening in. Uh, I think um, Slutman Stab uh, answered pretty much everything there. I, there is one uh, little tidbit that I guess is relevant. The state police have already converted to digital so we're we're kind of behind the curve in um, being able to to communicate in that lane already and i can tell you from the training i've been in the last last week and this week uh, emergencies live and die on the backs of communications so um i i I recognize the the desire, perhaps, to put this off to uh, until town meeting day. But I also think about um, the arc of the supply chain right now. Um, and, you know, some things that we should be able to go down the street and get just can't happen. Speaking so, of that, when are you looking at being able to acquire these if approved? In terms of I, time frame. We'd be I have no earthly idea what the arc is, but it, I think that's pretty quick. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Do we want to entertain a motion? Yeah, I'll make the on? motion to uh, approve the purchase of the uh, radio system using ARPA funds. And I'll second that. I'm allowed to do so in the chair seat. Any other further discussion yeah, think, now that so we have the motion? I would like floor? to say that, that I, I, I'm posing a lot of questions uh, to learn and to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, more to bring up the, the, the fact that as we go into budget season, it's important that uh, um, we remember what the voters approved and, uh, and really to set the stage for a discussion that uh, we, we've made a lot of uh, extra budgetal uh, decisions uh, this year. So that's kind of why I brought brought the question up. Well said. And I think that that is always good. So I always appreciate the questions. And um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. 
And next on the agenda is the Recreation Committee Signs and Budget Request. And we had noted that Tim Shea would be discussing that, and we have that in our packet as well. You've got the, the signs proposals, and Mr. Shea is here to speak yep. to it as well. Excellent. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, so really probably here for four things tonight. Um, one is to ask for your approval. I come a month or so ago, and uh, you wanted to see the language that we were going to do on the signs at Dog River Park and up at uh, Berlin Pond. So I think those have been sent. Uh, so looking to get an approval for the verbiage. Um, the second ask, which is related to that, would then be approval for the expense to have those signs made. Um, I think at this point, likely with seasons, um, they may not get put up until the spring, but that just depends somewhat on Mother Nature and, and other things. But um, So yeah, so I guess I'll stop. That's kind of the first two related things is that. I don't know if there's any questions there. I have uh, that verbiage did go through the Conservation Committee as well, just knowing that they're uh, at least a stakeholder or knowledgeable. Um, so they have uh, blessed the... Uh, that verbiage as well. And how many signs were you looking at? Tim? Just uh, one each. One each. And what is the current cost? It is, uh, and they're 24 by 30, so two feet by two and a half feet. Um, this price was done a little while ago, so I'm going to round up a little bit. This price was 206, but just knowing how volatile things are, I would say maybe, you know, like not to exceed 250, I guess, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. knowing that things are. Um, not move in the smaller direction these days. Mm -hmm. And that's for the two? That's for the two, yep, yep, just a little over 100 each. That's very reasonable, it seems. Yeah. And that's, yeah, over at uh, work. State. Just the next question is, they, they do have that amount in their budget now. Yeah. So okay. this time. Excellent. To cover that. So that's the first two. I don't know if you want to... Any of, questions for Tim based yeah. on what he's provided for us already? Entertain a motion, um, broken out perhaps in two parts, based on what Tim provided us. So, more in two parts, huh? It doesn't necessarily have to be in two parts. Okay. If you can then combine it, I'll, that I'll would be that beautiful. Acceptable. I think that that would work would, really uh, well. Move to accept the recreation, recreation Committee's signs and budget request as uh, listed in the two documents. Excellent. Second? Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all should, those in favor? Should it say not to exceed anything, or do you want to just go with. Actually, that's not a bad idea to have the two um, at approximately $206, not to exceed $250. Yeah, I think that, that yeah, I don't expect it will be that much. We can get a good with that car. Absolutely. Excellent. Second on that? Adjustment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. And thank you, Tim. Yep. Thank you. So another uh, request, one thing we're looking to do is um, start up a uh, this kind of a pickup volleyball. Um, we've gotten to talk to the school, they've got the nets, and they're willing to offer the facility, and the rec committee will help kind of organize and promote that. that and we've fun. worked through events and uh, um, as well with uh, Vermont leagues of cities and towns as far as liability and <coughs> um, forms and stuff for um, insurance, participants, and insurance and participants. So, Kind of checked all those boxes, but the one thing that's remaining is we need to order some uh, some volleyballs for the kind of just for that. I won't call it a league, but that activity. And um, so I'd like to ask for uh, a request for to buy six volleyballs um, at the at the price of they're forty five dollars each. So we'll call it uh, two hundred twenty five dollars. Um, for volleyballs to have for pick up volleyball through the, the winter months here. Excellent. And do you want that to come from the town's budget or do you no, have those funds in your budget? It, they have it in the rec. Fund. In, in the, the rec. rec fund. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Come good. out of the rec. Yeah. Excellent. And when do you anticipate that starting? Um, well, 
probably, I mean, as soon as we get the balls and kind of get it kicked off, I'd say in the next, well, of course the holidays here, probably post-holidays, I'd say just given all the activities in this. Like a weekly event, would you yes, say? Yes, yep, That's yep. Fun. I do the question for you. Yes. You're saying the volleyballs are forty-five dollars each. Yes. And so six of those would be two seventy. Oh, you know what? I think I I did my math earlier. It's going to do five. So okay. let's do five. Yeah, okay, five should be fine. enough. We think. Sure yeah. Work. No, thank you for. I wrote down two twenty-five, but I didn't know how many. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sorry, two twenty-five for five. Excellent. That should get us through. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, I entertain a motion. To accept the Recreation Committee's uh, request to purchase five volleyballs. With an amount not to exceed $225? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Right. And the final thing is probably more just informational. Um, We've done some work out on the ice rink, and the committee's been talking about the possibility in the future of looking for some grant opportunities. Uh, I've talked to Tom as well, um, and then the Vermont Leagues of Cities and Towns to look for some recreation grants to potentially, instead of having the grass out there to paving the, the area straight out here, Mm -hmm. um, and paving that for kind of uh, all year round usage. So it would be courts in the summer months and then in the winter it would be much easier to flood and <laughs> not have to. So um, really it's more of just, like I say, informational or I don't know if they need a motion to at least start to research the possibilities. Of, <coughs> I have looked into some grant that is a federal uh, avenue and then there's a, there's a federal that requires a match and then a state grant possibility that could be used towards that match as well. Obviously looking at getting a budget together for it. So like I said, at this point I don't know if there's an ask. It's more just informational that will probably come back at some point as I gather up more information, get some ideas in mind. I don't even know how much the town at this point would be, you know, we'd look for any any financing. Obviously it'd be great if we didn't have to and we could get it through grants and, and matching opportunities by by the right uh, by the right funding sources. That's excellent. I think it's really good that you're bringing it forward mm -hmm. and having this discussion. I don't think there's anything that we necessarily have to make a motion on in terms of that, but you could always come back to us, yeah. you yeah. know, as you do additional research. But questions, Joe? No, just going to say, Tim, is if you're going to look to cover that using asphalt, mm -hmm. of course the black will absorb the heat and you're going to fight to keep any ice on there. So I just want to throw something out there before we go into too many details. <clears throat> We've also um, are working with Norwich University, the engineers there, um, on a couple of projects here that they're actually going to give us basically three different designs on, and I'll use the, since we're talking about the rink, I'll just talk about that one. Three different designs on, right, the, the, the just Volkswagen up the midterm and then the Cadillac version. Um, of what could be done uh, to support that and some estimated costs for that as well. Once we get that, obviously you'll have that to be able to look look for grants a little with some costs and an actual plan in hand. Um, and at that point we'll get into more details. But you know, to your point, you're right. And they're gonna come back with some probably uh, in discussions with them, um, multifunctional surface. Um, you know, like a, a track type of thing of, or some sort was probably going to be in the in the top tier plan because um, they'll take that into consideration. But that's being done at no cost to the town, uh, working with Norwich on one of their uh, engineering programs. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But yeah, and, yeah. The, to your point, the you know a black surface trying to get the snow. But there's other things we can do there to help um, seasonally. Just put some uh, tarp over it or some white plastic, basically to help that reflectivity and uh, for um, flooding it and getting it to cool. That's great. So. Thank you so much. Any other questions for Tim? Any other further discussion? Not hearing any. Thank you. And thank you, Tim. Thank you. Okay, next up on the agenda is the highway budget review. And we have Highway Superintendent Tim Davis with us this evening. Feel free to come forward, Tim, if you'd like. Get him back here. Oh, <laughs> you can't hear me. You're too shy. Good night.
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Again, you should have copies. I think there's uh, four for the highway in there. You should have one for sum, um, summer, winter roads, general, and other. And what that will show you is from 2022, last year's budget, and proposed for this year, and the different amounts. Uh, what I didn't include in your package, um, but I did send to you electronically, was a one-page document. If that's the full budget, you could take the highway portion out of that. But that explains uh, in a little more detail what's increased and what may have decreased, uh, and what is directly within our control and what isn't, for example, like insurance um, and those increases. Um, so that you, you should have hopefully had a chance to look at as well. If not, I can give you another copy tonight if you'd like one. But. I don't personally need it tonight, but okay. thank you for sending it to us, Ben. Would you like to go over them one by one, Ben, and discuss? Or are there any... Um, particular things you'd like us to discuss overall as we're looking at them? It hasn't really changed a whole lot. There is a few items. Oh. Added a little bit extra to the chloride because that's gone up due to the cost of everything else going up, trucking and all that other stuff. We added a little bit more to the culvert materials list because <clears throat> culvert has gone up. I think somewhere's around close to 15% this, this summer alone. So that's not an increase in the number of culverts that may be replaced. It's that's just, just showing enough to keep cost. up. Okay. Just to, to keep up with what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we're not falling behind there as far as having culverts to replace the culverts that we need. Um, so your fuel summer oh, time. Fuel, yeah. Or we'll go back to summer. Your, your, your summertime overtime. What is that? Is that um, like emergency calls? What, what what is summertime overtime? Pretty much. You know what I mean? If we have a project that goes late, you know what I mean? Okay. It's easier to stay an hour late versus try to restart again and take up a couple hours in the morning. We'll work. But there's not, you know what I mean? It's mainly if we get storm damage. <coughs> Or trees down, but like summertime overtime is a it's pretty minimal. minimum. It, it went. That's one of the few that went down. Well, this I year, mean, and it was based on actual numbers from last year. Yeah, yeah, in a reduction. So, okay. and you're at full staff right now, Tim. Correct. Right now we are. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hope that it stays that way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was uh, a little surprised at the small increase in the asphalt marking and sealing, uh, only $10,000 increase from, from 23 to 24. Uh, do you anticipate being able to do less? Uh, or will you probably do less with that small increase because of inflation and costs and asphalt? And It's been, I wouldn't say that it's like gone out of, realm but it's been steady as far as price wise so we've been able to keep somewhat of the same mileage every year um, a lot of that is is um, like last year we didn't get awarded any grants but most of the time is we can use that money to match paving grants for class threes and class two roads um, but Last year we didn't get any grants, so we spent most of that money just paving some smaller stuff that we could that needed to be done that normally doesn't get done because we end up using that money toward matching grants and for paving and whatnot there. So are we applying for grants currently? Every Good. year. Oh, Wonderful. Yes. Excellent. And you don't foresee an increase on the resurface and the gravel itself? Uh, the we're, we're still in our, I think we're in our second year of our three-year deal mm -hmm. as far as price goes. 
it might go up a smidge next year, but they haven't raised the cost on us once this year. Everybody else has done four or five, six times of an increase in price. They haven't, they haven't charged us an extra dime. We're still paying the price that we paid last year, so they've honored their price. And, but they have said that, you know what I mean, they might have to go up a little bit next year just to cover fuel char fuel costs of the machinery to make the product. But you know, so you're you we are under contract to purchase X number of yards of material. Yep, and it was a three-year contract. And it's a three-year contract. So and they're holding their price. <coughs> and we've got one. Well, you should. It's a contract. Right. Exactly. So. Okay. And this year is our last year with that? No, we still got another year to go. We've got one more year. Previous years, <coughs> it's been a year to year contract. And again, we were fortunate. A lot of the last board agreed to let us do a three year term contract rather than a year to year because, again, year to year, you're at risk every year if you're going up, right? We got three years with a, with a pretty much stable price. Um. We're one of the last few towns to even do that that way. Everybody, for the most part in the surrounding area, on a pretty good circle, has just gone to one distributor and they kind of stay loyal and work with each other type deal that way. But. <clears throat> It seems to be nice as far as like trying to get that three year deal as far as like you can set your budget for the next three years and you're not guessing. Mm -hmm. So do you feel confident with the what you're presenting to us or do you foresee that this could change up or down? I Maybe think this is gonna be a pretty stable budget. I mean, we didn't go, for the most part, like I said, everything is pretty close to the same as last year with some that have, you know, small increases. I say small increase, but they're, some of them are, you know, a little larger on the dollar amount, but it's, you know, it's kind of... <coughs> equivalent to what the cost of the material or whatever product we're using is is moving in the upward trend mm -hmm. and availability is another thing it's becoming hard for some things I think it's worth pointing out too just on the highway side alone between uh, general insurance and workers comp for the highway there's a $12,500 increase and just those two alone as well. You throw in the, the health insurance, that's another almost $3,000 of increase as well. And then the Medicare is another $2,300. So there's some, a fair amount of increase just in that alone. Barring any grants, and we don't know what we might get, um, it's great that you're applying. Is there any aspects of what's integrated into the budget that could come out of ARPA funds to decrease what's needed in the budget itself for highway. Just a thought that I had. Anything out of ARPA? Let me just take a quick look. I don't believe so at this time. I mean, anything that, that could have been, uh, for example, the radio upgrade, mm -hmm. we've done. We've right. taken advantage right. of. Uh, How about streetlights? Streetlights, that's just electricity. Oh, that's just oh, electricity. It's not electricity replacement. Uh, no, okay. no, or repairs. Because sometimes there's some repairs. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Tim? Or any concerns about the budget or things folks want to pose? Hearing none, I'll no. thank you, Tim, for presenting to us this evening. Thank you. Appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. Okay, moving 
forward, we have the town clerk budget review. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. I don't know if there's anything in here that is going to surprise you necessarily. Um, we will be looking at a one election year, um, so at least as far as election related expenses, we anticipate those will be less um, in the budget. Um, I think, please tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> that we have stayed within the budget um, last year fairly well, so I'm really not requesting any notable increases. Um, I don't know if you guys have also the list of anticipated appropriations that are going to be on the ballot. We obviously don't know. Okay. We don't have a full list anyways. Um, she's, she's talking about the one that the, uh, the last page of the budget review that I gave you it was mostly blank for appropriations, but it showed you the last Excellent. two years. So. There'll be Thank more. you. <laughs> entertain any questions that folks may have. I'm looking at it myself currently and appreciate you being here to explain it with us. There is some additional information um, I think that Rachel's going to want to share tonight just to tell you um, a little bit about some of the things that she's looking at as well. Some of it is already included. There's some money set aside in the budget for this, but I'm going to let her give you the details. She's done a lot of research and work on uh, doing some digitization. That's in the, in the right. clerk's well, that is something that's so needed, and we appreciate that you're taking that Absolutely. and moving we'll forward with the research. That's exciting. I didn't bring any numbers for you. I figured I would bother you with that another meeting. Um, I'm still waiting for quotes from one more company so we can compare prices. Um, but we're hoping maybe within the next year we can have a system in place, have our land records digitized, looking back 40 years, hopefully, which is the standard for um, real estate researchers. Um, That's wonderful. How many companies are you looking at? You've got one more you're waiting for? Yeah, so How we have total? numbers for two Great. right now. Great. That's exciting. That is exciting. Um, along with that as well, we're hoping to get a map scanner so that we can scan all the paper maps in the back and make them more searchable. That we have some money in the budget for, that scanner, that large scanner. I just did that we carried over. In reserves? No, I thought we had a budget that was some money set aside we had talked about before for that uh, scanner for the clerk's office. That's in reserve. That's in reserve? Yeah. Okay. What's the price that you see right now for that scanner? Um, I actually didn't look at numbers for the no. scanner okay. itself. I've only looked for um, the system for digitizing. I don't okay. know if you want to hear any ballpark numbers, but <laughs> I, I don't think more we need it. For I this, right? Yeah. I don't think it would be needed at this time, but that's great that there's money in the reserves, like Diane said. That would be very helpful as we move forward. But other departments, such as um, utilities boards, said that they would be willing to put some money towards that as well. Great. So, so is the potential uh, contract for the actual scanning of the documents, or is it the infrastructure and system and software package that actually can be searched for the... There will be a monthly charge going forward for the system itself. Just the software, yeah. What would you say approximately that would be? Just a uh, two hundred mm -hmm. monthly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people pay a fee to utilize the system. Yep. Same as coming into the vault. Mm -hmm. They get charged a fee for doing the records, printing out documents and such. There's a fee associated with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pay-per-view. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Once it gets digitized, right? Exactly. I think it'll be well received. I really believe people will be more than willing to pay the fee for the modernization. Yes. Mm -hmm. Question. Um, I think a while back we were talking about upgrading computers. Mm -hmm. Were we not? Yes. 
and done. And did that we, was approved. That, that was, was approved. that was finally done. Okay. That not just computers, but the entire server system on this side of the building has been done and completed. And everybody has laptops, so if we have a bad winter day and it's not safe for our employees to come in, they can work from home just like they were at the office safely. And Vince, can you announce but, again for anyone listening the new website to the town? Because that <laughs> I think that is working really well. www.berlinvt.gov, not .org. That's wonderful. Um, and that site also has been upgraded as well. Um, again, our goal, and uh, we're working with our other software company, Polymorphic, to have um, the ability to license your dog online, uh, fill out all the zoning forms and permits uh, online as well. So we'll be moving into the digital world over the course of the next year or two as we get documents converted, uploaded onto the new website, um, along with the land records as well. That's great. I guess the only reason I asked about the computers is I see in 2022 uh, and 23 we're <coughs> zero across the board. Is that paid through some other funds or another and line? No, that was, we were replacing, for a while we were replacing uh, like, like a laptop every year, like a computer system every year. Yeah. But this past year we you know, got everybody new laptops. So there'll be quite a few years before we have to replace and anything. At like least that. three to five before we have to start replacing laptops, at least. Okay, thank you again. And the server should be good for much, much longer probably than that. Six years in one. Uh, probably closer to ten for us. That's very good news. Yep, I'm just I'm doing the math in my head a little bit. I'm interested. Uh, how many people do you say on average come in a day to look at land records? Maybe. And what, what's the charge for accessing that? It's four dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. okay. But there are copy fees and all kinds of other fees as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the software will pay for, pay for itself easily. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It should. The monthly fee. Yeah. Take some time to pay off the sure. purchase price. Sure. <laughs> So, so I guess that brings me back to the question. So the software system um, is the actual, so the, the map scanner is what's, so that will be on you and? The map scanner would be separate from the Digitization. system that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the scanning and indexing of that will happen independently. Uh, but then the maps system, I mean, when, when we are able to scan these maps, we can then link them so those could be searchable as well. Okay. So Does that answer your question? Uh, I'm not sure. So we will be outsourcing <laughs> the actual scanning of the current documents. The land records. Yes, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. The That's maps right. are separate from the land records. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and the, the maps scanner. would be like a photocopier type thing, just a huge one. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to tell us about? I don't think so, no. Very documented well. Any other questions for Rachel? Thank you for the for the negative percentage on next on the 2024 budget. <laughs> we love more of those. We appreciate that sometimes, right? <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. Okay, next up on for discussion is a tire disposal discussion and decision. This yeah. was on last agenda. We talked about it. We couldn't make a decision, so we right. put it on here for a final discussion and decision, I think. Um, so there's there's been a little small development since then as well. Uh, it doesn't change a lot. Uh, we still need to do the cleanup in the yard. Um, so we're going to still look at asking to uh, have that $2,500 do a in the spring probably after the winter tire changeover when a lot of tires make it to the side of the road um, do a collection again a free drop off type of thing uh, get enough tires to uh, warrant the one company in New England that does it to come and collect them all uh, to do the, the cleanup in the yard uh, so we need six to seven hundred tires um, I think we got a, a bet going here between I say there's two to two fifty. He says there's closer to three hundred tires, but it's irrelevant really. It's just that's between us. But we got to get up to six hundred or seven 
hunter for them to come and collect them, and we're looking for approval um, to be able to do that. We do have the money. Uh, we allocated 5000 in last year's budget, or this year's budget, I should say, um, and we're putting that in again for next year's budget as well for cleanup out there uh, in the yard. Um, so that is in the budget. Uh, but again, on, the, on a good note, uh, we spoke with Town Fair Tire. Going forward after the cleanup is done, uh, we are able to take 10 vehicle tires, car tires, no truck tires, 10 tires a week free uh, to drop off at, at Town Fair for recycling at no cost to, to the town. So as we pick them up on the roadside, we can do 10 a week down there. So that will keep the pile from building up, hopefully. That's wonderful, and thanks for following up on that discussion with them as well. Yeah, so well, That's good to know. So what we're looking for tonight is the uh, the approval to go forward with, uh, you know, in the in the in the spring probably is the best timing. You know, you know we'll coordinate that with him for, uh, you know, a tire drop off, mm -hmm. to get our numbers up to get that collection done, so. with the money that we have in the budget now. So based on what Vince described, would I welcome it? So what was that amount? Uh, right now, if, if we did it. Uh, it would be $2,500. I suspect in the spring it might be a bit more because uh, everything else is going up still, so mm -hmm. it may be a bit more. Uh, as I said, we've got 5000 in the budget for cleanup out there, so I mean, we have it. If it goes up a, a, an additional $500, let us say we're good, for, we're good for that. And then with the addition of the help from Town Fair Tire, um, would you presume that it would not be anywhere near this cost next year, given that they'll take Oh, no, we, we shouldn't. Uh, again, uh, the cost will be much less. I mean, we'll have either truck or loader tires or greater tires someday mm -hmm. that there'll be a cost for if we use Town Fair Tire. Well, but we should never get to 700 on, tires again. On that note, we don't, we don't keep our tires. If we change out truck tires, they stay and we pay the disposable fee at the but That's where I was going with that. So right. we'll, we'll pay Town Fair Tire to take them at that point. Well, we, we just whoever does our equipment and stuff. Yeah, or where we have it done. Yeah. But we'll be paying the disposal fee and keeping up with it rather than making a pile out there. Excellent. But the, the automotive tires are the biggest ones, right? I mean, right. every green up day, we, and throughout the year, we're picking them up on the side of the road. And right. Or those that have been tossed clean. over and yeah. down a huge amount. So, and I mean, now, now we can take them down there as we get 10 a week or not and, and dispose of them at no cost. That's great. So I entertain a motion? I, I'm almost prepared to make the motion, but I would like to, to um, maybe make a suggestion that uh, we try to be uh, maybe creative working with the neighboring town to see if we can uh, share their tires or, or they can take advantage of our, our truckload pickup and maybe split the costs. I don't know if I can see if they're interested. I'll ask them if they're interested. Worth, worth an email or something. Splitting. My concern is we'll go over the six or seven hundred and uh, <laughs> if we do that. But I, I will certainly reach out and see. Okay. So I make a motion that uh, we move forward with the Tire cleanup and removal uh, in the amount of twenty-five hundred. Can hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next up is approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. All right. Well, this is your, usually you, but I'll try to do my best. Guys. I'm so sure you'll. I'd like to make a motion to accept the payroll warrant 23-12 for payroll from November 20th, 2022 to December 3rd, 2022, paid on December 7th, 2022, in the amount of $63,888.21. We do all of them. And further, uh, to accept the payroll warrant 23G10 with checks 22503 to 22531 for payables in the amount of $236,710.50. And to accept the general journey, journal entries for September and October of 2022 
uh, and he reconciled November bank, bank statements for the general fund and sewer and water and checking accounts. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Carol. Also now up is the approval of the November 21st, 2022 minutes as presented. Make a motion to approve the November 21st, 2022 minutes. Second. Aye, second. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Was there anything additional, um, Vince, that was going to go on the agenda this evening that you want to discuss before roundtable? No, just no. some roundtable items. Okay, that very I have. good. Okay, so I'm going to open it up for roundtable. Joe, do you have anything this evening? Um, I believe the select board is still looking for another town resident uh, to sit in on the fire department's board of directors. So. Excellent. Thank you. Carl? So I read an interesting article uh, in the Times Argus about the local options tax, and uh, it's, uh, it's something that we might discuss in the future, but Berlin doesn't have a post office, as, as we all know, so we don't have our own exclusive zip code. Uh, and it's interesting, and we're not quite sure, but um, it's possible that on some online purchases, uh, Berliners who have a Montpelier zip code or a Barry zip code may be paying local options tax now without Berlin reaping the rewards of that options tax. So I know it's something that we, we're thinking about looking into. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you bringing that forward. I think it's really important and I believe there's a lot of people who may not be aware of that. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that forward. Carl informed me of that at this morning, this morning and I have, uh, I've sent some questions off to the, to the state uh, tax office to inquire um, exactly about that um, to see uh, what they come back with for an answer. I will also try to speak to Carol Dawes who raised the issue when they approved uh, the local options tax in Barrie. Um, she, was, she was aware that it might have been an issue to see if she has any updates um, and has any additional information that may be of help to us on that as well. That sounds wonderful. So. And I think the information will be very beneficial in terms of our discussion at the last meeting when we could potentially put it on for it, another it, Yeah, to, it, it's something I think we have to have an answer to before we go back to the voters uh, with another local options tax. Absolutely. Um, to fully understand it and make sure. Mm -hmm. Because if it is specifically related to, to a zip code, whether we approve it or not, there'll still be confusion. Mm -hmm. um, where that money's coming from and where it should go, mm -hmm. right? So we have to we have to get an answer to that. Excellent. So we'll be working on that. Excellent. Um, any anyone else is David on with us? Uh, he's not. He's not. And did Brad join? He did not. Okay. The only other thing that I have for the roundtable is I wanted to thank Tim Davis and his crew. Um, I've heard from residents who are appreciative of local recent work and um, things throughout the community. And so good job. You know, thank, thank you. you. I, I have a couple of things. Excellent. Of course. Please. Sorry. No, no. Don't be sorry. Um, Please go forward. What I will bring to the next meeting for the board's approval, uh, obviously I have to get it on the agenda, didn't come in in time. Uh, we've been having issues, as you know, with Beaver blocking the culverts out here uh, on Crosstown and over on Mirror Lake Road. And, um, you know, we did do some trapping earlier in the year, um, uh, but that uh, several residents um, have raised some concern about trapping the beavers and, and got involved in looking for better ways to do that. Um, they, came, they came back with um, Protect Our Wildlife uh, of Vermont, it's a nonprofit corporation that um, does do some work uh, with some people with regards to beaver baffles uh, to prevent, help prevent that and more humane uh, for the beavers. So I did reach out. I've had conversations with them. Uh, they've actually come back with a, a local person that installs these that's state approved um, with, a, with a price, and the price is $8,000 to install them both. And should we agree to work with... Uh, 
with the Protect Our Wildlife with regards to that, they will pick up half the cost or $2,000 each. So they would, they would put in 4000 of the $8,000 to do this with an agreement. Um, basically, uh, that if the device isn't working, we notify them right away uh, and they will get involved if there's any malfunctions. They'll kind of monitor it and it, it, they want it to be there for like 10 years. Right? That's kind of the thing. And I'll give everybody a copy of all the details of the MOU that they're looking for. Um, and we'll discuss that, whether or not we want to move forward with that or not. Okay. Thanks for bringing that forward, Vincent. Definitely, I think as a board, we'll want to look at that. Uh, the second item, I will send you the information as well. Uh, that will be on the next meeting, is regarding the Historical Society. Um, we did, uh, we agreed probably a little over a month, well, it's been a, more than a month now, uh, to invite <coughs> them um, to a meeting to discuss their contract. I'm just, it's just a reminder for the board. Um, and get some more details around that and perhaps even negotiate a, a new contract with them. There has not been an increase in their rate as there was supposed to be contractually as well. Uh, and I'm going to have a, a letter drafted to reflect that, that I think we should at least prior to inviting them to the meeting send out to them to tell them what it will be. It was agreed that would, they would be grandfathered, there wouldn't be any charges for the past years where there was not an increase as to what their new rate will also be going forward. Um, and I want to do that, obviously, to have it in the new budget numbers as well. Um, so that will be on the agenda, and I will get you the details of that information as well for, That's the, great. for the next meeting. And then we'll also have to decide, and I'll coordinate with them, when they can attend the meeting to have further discussions about the contract. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. That's it for me. Any other items that anyone would like to discuss? No. Okay. Yeah. And we don't have any need for an executive session tonight, right? No. Will I entertain a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. That's the second. No second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion. Motion. So moved. <laughs>